Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, aka IB Crazy, and this is How to Be Successful in FPV, Part 7, Hooking the System Up. FPV is nothing more than flying a model airplane with a wireless video system. So hopefully you're already familiar with this, the model airplane controller, and hopefully you're also familiar with a basic model airplane. So that means all we have to do is teach you how to wire it all up. And luckily, again, it's very simple. As stated earlier, FPV is nothing more than flying a model airplane via an onboard video camera. And of course, the onboard video camera is nothing more than a wireless security system we hack up and suit for flight. So how do you do that? How do you hook this up? Well, what I like to do is I'm already, we're all so familiar with servos. So guess what? I just wire a servo connector right in. Just like a servo, red is hot, black is ground, and yellow is the video. Okay? Now, I just wire it in with a servo connector just like a servo. Red for hot, black for negative, and then your signal wire. It's the same thing as a servo. The only difference is this wire is carrying a video signal instead of a turning signal for your servo. And then I make it real nice to plug it in so I can plug in very simply all RC components that I'm used to. Now, remember, this is usually 12 volts. You don't want to plug a servo into this, so make sure you label your wires properly. Because if you wire a servo into this, you're going to burn up your servo. Although wiring a servo into this wouldn't hurt it a bit, but wiring a servo into your video system will burn it up. So what about inside the airplane? What does it look like? Well, basic model airplane again, but let's see what's inside. Well, this one has a pan camera, so I can look around. There's my servo for my pan camera. Video feed coming out of the camera. Again, just like the transmitter, same thing. Ground, 12 volt power, and video. And again, a servo connector. Very, very simple, very straightforward. That's all there is to it. Just wire a servo lead in. So how do you get power to it? Well, simple, I wire it into the battery. In this case, I used a power filter. I like to run everything off of one battery in my systems. That way, there's only one battery to monitor. The problem is, is the power going to the motor typically tends to be a little bit unclean and therefore it needs to be cleaned up. The easiest way to do that is with a power filter. And all you do, is wire your positive into the positive of your speed control and the negative into the negative of the speed control. And out the other end is a clean 12 volt power. The reason you want a power filter and a wire this way is it'll keep the video from mixing up when this motor starts to spin. Now, some people prefer two battery setups. That's okay. If you have two batteries, you do not need the power filter. However, my problem is, is I have a hard time monitoring two batteries. So I just use this. But out of my power filter coming right out of my battery, I go to a very, very simple power bus. And remember how I showed you that my camera had a servo connector right here. Guess what? There's the other end of the servo lead. All I did is I cut a servo extension in half. Negative to negative, red to positive, and then there's my signal. And when I'm ready to fly, I hook it up and I'm ready to go. Well, what about my video transmitter? Well, you can see I spliced these cables so that I've got my power coming in. This goes to my camera. That's going back to my video transmitter. Again, ground, camera, video transmitter. Now the white, I simply spliced right together. Why? There is no power modification to it. This carries a signal from the camera in the front of the airplane to the transmitter in the back. Very simple, don't make it complex. When you're installing an on-screen display, all you do is you cut this wire, run the camera into one side, and the video transmitter out. All it does is it takes a splice and it goes through a heads-up display. In this case, I didn't want one. All right, what about the video transmitter? There it is back there again, servo leads. 
Red for power, black for negative, yellow is signal. Now what about this white wire over here? I've had this white wire that I don't seem to say much about. That's for audio. White is always audio. Since I don't fly with a microphone or audio, I simply don't connect it. Some people will ground it. I just leave it floating. That way, if I need to move or extend wires, well, there's just a simple servo connector that comes all the way up to my power bus up in the front. The last part of this installation is using your antennas properly. And what that means is your video antenna must be upright, like here. With a video antenna upright, it gives the best signal strength and will work best with your video system, assuming that you have that antenna set up properly. Now on to the control. I'm using 72 megahertz control. Note that my antenna, I keep it as straight as possible, running it out the wing, okay? Now you can turn it 90 degrees and come out the back of the wing like I did here, or just let it dangle. The trick is to keep this as straight as possible. And you also notice something else. That wire is all twisted up. Where does it go and why? Well, this is the elevator wire. The reason why it's twisted up is because it bypasses the video transmitter. Any wire that gets close to this video transmitter should be twisted up like that to eliminate interference. Otherwise, this servo will go like this and my, I might have a slightly bumpy ride. So we've gone over the airplane or the helicopter if you choose. Same difference. What about the ground station? Before I get 100 questions, this is a new experimental antenna called the Pepper Box. It has not yet been released. I'm still testing it. But today's flight, it did very well, so you might see it soon. You can use any antenna you want. And I've used the most common system on a tripod. And that's all it is there, folks. I simply glued my video receiver right to the back of my antenna, mounted it to my tripod, and then I simply use a 12 volt three cell battery to power it up. No filtration, nothing needed. Just plug it in and we're powered up. Well, what about the cables? Well, I've got my video and my audio cable. Remember, yellow is video, white is audio. And where do these run? My goggles. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. It's just so simple. Run these cables to your goggles and they're meant to go together. Now, one thing I want to tell you is try not to make these cables too long. You only want them at most twice as long as you are tall. Any longer and you're going to get interference because you have a lot of RF noise around you with that radio transmitter in your hand. So try to keep these as short as possible, but make them too short and you're gonna knock your ground station over when you go to throw your airplane. Now also notice that just like my video transmitter antenna, this thing is upright. Now generally with circular polarization, there is no up or down. In this case, there is because of the orientation of the antennas. They're stacked on top of each other. Generally, with linear polarized antennas, you want the cable either coming out of the top or the bottom of the antenna as this is set up for vertical polarization. Like I said, in circular, it doesn't really matter except in this case where my antenna is stacked to give a certain type of performance. And that's all there is to it. It's just modifying the system to accept servo wires and then the receiver, well, it's just plug and play. Remember, anything more than this is too complex for a beginner. You don't need diversity. You don't need tracking. You can add that in later. Start out simple. Receiver, antenna, done. That's all you need to start. Complexity makes more room for failure. As you start adding more systems, more can go wrong. There's more setup time. So you might want to keep it simple. Me personally, I developed my own tracker, developed my own diversity controller. They sit on a shelf. They look really pretty up there, nice and fancy, and I never use them. Why? Because I'm afraid they're gonna fail and I never need them. One thing that doesn't get a whole lot of discussion that probably should is how much transmit power is required when you're hooking up, up your airplane. Remember that this transmitter is creating a lot of RF interference. You're trying to fly this airplane from a long distance away, so your transmitter signal must make it to this airplane. So you wanna keep this 
at a reasonable size. Well, what's a reasonable size? Uh, for most people, 500 milliwatts. One half watt is plenty. In my case, I've only got 200 on board. Why? You don't need that much. Well, how far can I go? I get this a lot. That 200 milliwatt transmitter is capable of much further than the 72 megahertz radio that's installed in here, and it will absolutely blow away a 2.4 gigahertz radio. With the Pepperbox antenna, and only 125 microwatts, that's one eighth of a watt, I was able to go a half a mile. 200 milliwatts, I'm, a, I'm thousands of times stronger than that. What does that mean? That's probably good for 30 or 40 miles. On 200 milliwatts, chances are you're not gonna fly that far. So please, stay out of the two and a half and one and a half watt transmitters. We experienced pilots have a saying about those. High power transmitters for the newbies that don't know any better. But now you do. 500 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts, generally works for just about everybody. So a few key points to remember. You only have to remember three wires. Red for positive, black for negative, yellow is video signal. And it just wires right into your video transmitter. Don't make it too complex. You don't need all that stuff. How much transmit power? 200 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, four, 500, plenty. 1.5 watts, way too much. How about the receiving station? Diversity antenna tracker? No, start out simple. Receiver glued to the back of your antenna on a tripod. Wire your goggles right in. Use an old junk battery, three cell LiPo. And that's all you need. Don't make it too complex. The more complex you make it, the more likely you're gonna to be to be very, very frustrated. FPV can be very frustrating as you start adding more complex systems. But as you start to understand it, feel free to expand. It's always fun. This has been an IB Crazy tutorial and keep your wings in the sky.